they get the chance They were born in bloody circumstance To go Welcome to the Scottish Rugby Podcast. It is myself, John Anderson, in the hot seat tonight. We have got a a calm before the storm episode for you tonight. We'll look at a wee bit of the European fixtures that have just taken place uh, and get ourselves into that uh, space where we start to hope um, with the Six Nations coming coming up, we'll probably find both my, both my guests are uh, feel, feeling that that H word creeping in a little bit. Um, tonight, I am absolutely delighted to be joined by the gruesome twosome again. I've got Johnny McGinty. Johnny, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing okay, mate. Doing okay. We're getting there. I'll, I'll maybe come to it uh, during the podcast, but no, we're doing good. Uh, I'm also joined by, uh, and w- what was the term you used? Uh, a euphoric, um, resplendent, Craig Manson? What was the term we used? Um, I, uh, euphoric, maybe, but um, hello, everyone. And I, too, don't give up about the Welsh. <laughs> Uh, if you, <laughs> you'll find out about that if you let. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe Bright will come to that later on as well. Uh, let's get some of the admin out of the way. Uh, obviously, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Great to have you along, and hopefully, uh, you continue to join us. If you are here and you like what you see, uh, there might be wider questions asked, but. <laughs> Johnny loves my sales pitch. Um, You've clearly got a type, is what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, if you if you want to be one of the gang, come on over to www.patreon.com slash Scottish Rugby Podcast, where you can subscribe for £3 a month and get yourself access to exclusive content, 
including our hands in the ruck section that we do every week where we cut loose. We put the world of rugby to rights. Uh, over the six nations as well, we are going to have some exclusive content for our patrons. Uh, might be in the, the format of the, the Only Finns series that we've done for a wee while. Uh, although Finn is now, you know, he's been popularised on, on television now, so uh, we might might be needing to come up with a different name for that. Uh, but there will be lots of exclusive content for you, so please come on over to Patreon, £3 a month, and support the podcast if you can. And we're joined by our final guest just in time. I've just done the admin. He obviously doesn't like that, but it is editor, founder, and he's disappeared. I was giving him a big I was giving him a big intro. And he's just switched his computer off, I think. He so, didn't fancy it. He did, yeah. clearly didn't. Anyway, we'll get back to that when he pops his head back up again. Uh, Rory Baldwin from the Scottish Rugby Blog may join us during the session uh, tonight. Let, boys, let's we'll cr- crack on. We've got a wee bit of news to get through first. Uh, for, first and foremost being, um, Craig, I'll come to you. Scotland, um, we, ha- we, ha- we have co-captains for this Six Nations. Um and neither of those co-captains are the captain we had last time we, you know, had a full-time captain. Um, Finn Russell has been named one of those co-captains. Brilliant, right? Yeah, I, th- I think, um, and, and again, we'll probably talk about uh, this further down the line, but after watching um, the first episode of a certain programme that has been released, um, I can see why he seems to have really become trusted by um by gregor um he seems to be uh, involved in everything that the team do and if you if you look at what he's achieved and when i say what he's achieved i'm not saying he's the only person to do it but what the way that he's being talked about at bath and how his teammates talk about him at bath and the, the sort of the, the level of calm or or self-belief that he brings to the team i can see why he's um can see why he's uh, he, he's the guy. So um, I know it was obviously for his yin, we've definitely got a yang in um, in Rory Darge. So uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Johnny, talk to me about that. Rory Darge, obviously, as of a Glaswegian persuasion, rate him very highly. I think that you know, and obviously he has he has captain Scotland previously at a very very young age. But Jamie Ritchie was the incumbent captain, and plays in the back row. Darge coming in, being given this responsibility this early in his career, it's uh, what, what's your what's your take on it? I think possibly he's going to benefit from from some of maybe the slight missteps that we made or Scotland made with with Jamie Ritchie, which is that Jamie was quite a young captain as well. Um, he did obviously have senior players around him, but he was kind of given that leadership role completely himself. And we spoke last week about how he's not always done the best job of getting on the right side of the referee, which you could see Finn do a really, really, really good job over the World Cup warm-ups, like the France game in particular. Jamie was getting nowhere with the ref and Finn was instantly sort of a breath of fresh air. So I think Rory Darge is a really good, very long-term captain option. And I think giving him a little bit of co-captaincy experience along with somebody who's got that sort of level head that Finn's got will hopefully help him to not fall into the same trap as Jamie Ritchie did and and maybe he can make a longer go of being the captain. Yeah, I mean, the, the Six Nations last year and, and so, some of the fixtures where Ritchie was captain were pretty tough reading from a from a disciplinary perspective, you know, basics where we were being marched back uh, a few times where other teams maybe you don't see it as often, uh, but maybe we we just, Jamie had a wee bit of learning to do there. Uh, we are joined uh, wonderfully, finally joined by editor, founder uh, all-round uh, guru of the Scottish Rugby blog, Rory Baldwin Rory, how are you? Is this working? Yes. Yes. Excellent. I'm, in, that very case, I'm, in that case, I'm grand. I'll turn myself down a bit. Hey, good, good effort. Um, what, what's your take on the captaincy situation, Rory? Um, you know, obviously your namesake Darge coming into the role so young. As long as there is a Rory in the team somewhere, <laughs> um, he, does, he doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to be the captain. Uh, I think. Uh, I think Finn's probably the obvious obvious choice, having done a bit of it. If Darge is not fully fit, I think if you're going to drop Richie because he's not guaranteed a place in the team. You sh- you can't make it. Darjon is 
on his own if his fitness doesn't guarantee him a place in the team because you might have to end up dropping him for different reasons. So, yeah, I think having Finn as a kind of backup is probably the sensible sensible play. Do, do you think Finn will... So, do you think he will be the backup? Because I know there were some, some rumours, obviously. He is, he is obviously the senior player out of the, the pair of them. Do you, do, you, do you think genuinely it will be a Darge maybe leading because obviously forwards are closer to the referee most of the time and then Finn stepping in or do you think it will be Finn with Darge really doing it you know work shadowing yeah I mean I think first first couple of games certainly it, it's going to depend on Darge's fitness if he's even on the park but well, I think of course, Finn, Finn seems to be all right at talking to refs which he wouldn't think given you know given his levels of banter but he does actually seem refs seem to get on with him okay so I think um, I don't think the refs would have a problem with them. Whether the refs have a problem speaking to two people at once, they probably would be my guess. So they'll they'll say right, who's going to be doing the talking? Yeah. Um, so maybe you have Finn for talking to the ref, and then Darge for doing the actual kind of leading on the park. The, the way the way I think it was uh, Alan McDonald, friend of the pod, who described it, Johnny as. Uh, Finn, Finn will talk to the referee uh, or it'll be Darge doing the captaincy until it's him being the naughty boy and then Finn will step in <laughs> so I thought that was pre- pretty pretty well put um, obviously Johnny both both Glasgow and Edinburgh over the last you know few years have done this co-captaincy thing um, you know uh, the way I, I was kind of talking about it when it was announced and uh, every team usually will have a forwards and backs leader anyway. Do you think the co-captaincy thing is just a bit of a fad and really it's not worth anything? I, I do and I don't. I find it a bit strange. Um, I guess the other thing is that it's unlikely that, that they're going to both not play a full game. And so it does kind of save the the odd sort of minute or two around the 60 minute mark where, where the ref scored. Who's the captain? So having having two designated captains means you always know who the captain is on the field. And like you say, they've got very different roles. But to be honest, I think they could have made Finn captain and Rory Darge would have been doing the exact same thing anyway. I think it's probably just a way to get him ready for being a captain in the long term. And I know we've, we've kind of touched on this, Craig, but again, from, from an Edinburgh perspective, where where, do, where does this leave Jamie Ritchie? You know, there's there's talk of, you know, there's talk of him not even being in that 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 back the starting back row. There's you know big shout outs for guys like Andy Christie just now, which seems m- like madness to me, given where we were a year ago with Ritchie coming back into the team and making a huge, or you know, prior to the World Cup, Ritchie coming back and making a huge difference. But, you know, what, where, where do we stand with Jamie Ritchie? I do find it very odd because, obviously, we've, we've lost Tavish Watson um, and we talked about this many times in the pod about how he's he came back from the, from the Lions tour um, and just didn't seem to click again. Yeah. Jamie Ritchie has gone through a period of he's gone off the boil, but I actually think he's still one of the best back rowers a in Scotland and also in the six Na- you know in the Six Nations. So uh, I think he saves us very regularly. He saves Edinburgh on a regular basis when he you know if we're under the pump, he'll come in with a late penalty uh, turnover. So yes, fair enough. You've got. Um, we're we're in a we're in a rather lovely patch of back rowers with Dempsey, with Fagerson, with Andy Christie, with uh, Crosby, uh, Darge, you know, along with Jamie Ritchie. So you know, I can I can see why he's not been named um, captain again, and I can and, and Johnny's buying on. You know, he has had a few issues with with uh, talking to referees, but for me. It's the, the the less Scotland use them, and this sounds terrible, but the less Scotland use them, the more Edinburgh can use them. So if if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. But I think it's um, I think, well, let's just say that the other back rows who play instead of them better do a damn good job. Well, that uh, that's absolutely right, Craig, and I think it's it's important, you know that that uh, level of competition in that back row is is rather fierce and I think 
you hear some of the fans, obviously, there's been, when the squad was announced, obviously, Hamish Watson uh, was one that people picked out as not being in there. But I think we've got we've got players who can compensate and do different things to Hamish Watson. But um, I do agree. I think Jamie Ritchie is a very, very talented rugby player, a very special rugby player, particularly defensively. And I think playing at six, but having that experience at seven and given those options is, is really crucial. So it will be interesting to see, but it's almost like we've seamlessly done this, Craig. Um, Hamish Watson, you've mentioned him on the, on the try scoring uh, hunt at the weekend. Uh, we'll move on to the European games just now. Edinburgh, obviously, um, setting their stall out, uh, a Scottish team giving a Welsh team an absolute scalping. Um, how, how, how much did you enjoy that European game? Um, oh, God, I'm going to sound a little bit like a, oh, go like a, party, a party pooper. Be negative, yes! Um, <laughs> I think it's a win we needed. I think it's a win that I expected. I think if we came away from that uh, with a loss or or a, 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 a scrape through, I think we should have, we should be looking at ourselves in the mirror uh, and saying, "What the hell?" In fact, I'm at the point of they really should be looking at themselves in the mirror because the last the last um, thirty minutes of the game were were pretty shocking. Um, and you know, it's not the fact that and and and. Any Welsh fans that are out there that are listening to the pod, I don't not care about the Welsh. Okay, I just don't do it. <laughs> okay, I've, I've got a lot of uh, we've got friends there, and, and, and I was only having a wee laugh. Um, but what I would say is that any team at the moment in the URC that doesn't go to a Welsh team and come away with a win and a convincing win, they need to look at themselves because these are the opportunities they have at this moment in time because we're, because the Welsh teams are wounded and. Whether as a whether I'm being, I'm a, I'm a believer of when you've got a team on its back foot, you put the, you put your foot on their neck and or your knee on their neck, and you you drive home the win. You don't take the foot off the gas. And I just felt that Edinburgh made a, cu- a couple of silly mistakes, gave a couple away a couple of silly penalties, um, and they took their foot their, their, their knee off their throat and and let them knock into the game. You know. Well, when you, you said they'd made a couple of mistakes, Craig, I thought you were going to really tell us what you actually thought about it, because uh, it was <laughs> it, it was ta- it was tantalising where you were going with that. Much like uh, Jamie Ritchie, it's quite a tantalising prospect off the bench for the Six Nations. Uh, whoever you are, Facebook user, I bet it's Alan because he never reveals himself, but uh, as as is his wanting, you know, but he revealed that, himself to me, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> We're not allowed to talk about that. Um, no. R- Rory, obviously Edinburgh did get a, a big win, but a couple of couple of big uh, situations in the game. The one one of which the red card for Grant Gilchrist. Um, to, you know, as uh, two yellows. You go, yeah. you go a long time without seeing red cards for two yellows, and then in consecutive weekends you get them in. In, not in similar in certain similar circumstances, but in a way that you could actually argue in a lot of them, both both the yellows for both players were actually red cards uh, on their own. And I'm I'm talking if you don't if you're not aware, I'm talking about the um, bath fixture last last weekend, which was a stick on a red as you'll see all day. Um, Gilchrist, you know, I guess should he have went for for the first one? Uh, you know, the, 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 there's a yellow there, but. Is, is is that second one, is that worthy of a red on its own? Because it was pretty high. Yeah, I mean, I saw the first one and I thought he's he's going to get a red. He'll be in the bin for this one. So I was actually quite surprised when it was it was only a yellow. Um, the second one, uh, I don't remember it so much because like, I'd kind of switched off by by that point. The last 10, 10 minutes was, well, I mean, Craig is... Craig's uh, being Mr. Grumpy and saying the last half an hour was rubbish, but I'll just go. I'll be. I'll be positive and say it was only the last ten minutes that was like, <laughs> tr- truly Scotland shoot yourself in the foot, give away two cards, <laughs> possibly get Grant Gilchrist a ban. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen out out of that. Um, and then yeah, Duhan getting yellow carded for for one of these stupid uh, intentional unintentional knock ons that seem to oh, get. Uh, yeah. It's like that. That's that's my one of the rules that I hate in in the game. Whenever they ask <laughs> which rule would you change, that uh, that yellow card, I don't I don't have a proposed solution, but it just it winds me up. 
Um, so common yeah, I mean, sense, I think, common sense yeah. could be the proposed solution, couldn't it? We could actually could be, apply yeah. a decorum of common sense. And uh, Alex Craig was getting yellow carded as well, so it's not even as if we'd want to pick him as a replacement for Grant Gilchrist to be the band or anything. Um, yeah, I mean, it did it did sort of raise the prospects of who you pick in the Scotland second row if Gilchrist does get have a you know a disciplinary thing. It doesn't. I mean, I'm assuming we would have heard by now if there was anything coming out of it, but um, yeah, it could, it would. You know, there's no Johnny Gray. Richie Gray picked up an injury in the Glasgow game, did he not? Was it was hot one about a bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when, it's an old When guy. we get to the Glasgow game, I'll tell you the answer to who's going to the second row for Scotland, don't worry. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're going to say Scott Cummings and somebody. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, we'll wait and see what, what Johnny's Johnny's got to say. But, I mean, yeah, it was a, it was one, it was a weird, weird sort of last 10 minutes for a game in which Edinburgh had pretty much been the only 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 uh only team at the office yeah um as you as you say like the the welsh the welsh sides are now there back when it was the pro 12 that it was basically connaught was the only team that you could kind of rely on for for a win uh before the italians joined in that or was that pro 12 yeah because they made it the pro 14 um so yeah i think uh now basically the the welsh regions sorry wales are the uh are the whipping boys at the moment but i think well, they're either going to they're either going to disappear off to a, to this English league that they seem to love the idea of so much, or uh, they're going to need to sort something out to make it a bit more more competitive. Well, sp- speaking of Connacht, I just want to give a massive shout out to my hosts this weekend because I actually was over in Connacht uh, for for a wedding uh, and actually attended the Connacht Bristol game uh, at the at the sports grounds. Um, my hosts were. Fabulous, fabulous uh, rugby fans, and it was really great to spend some time over there. We actually got, um, we'll not get any trouble on this podcast for saying it, but there was a uh, there was utilization of uh, screenshots to uh, to sneak our way into the the main enclosure, but which actually, if you've never been to the ground, it's a it's an old greyhound stadium, and the the main bit is the enclosure, and it's still got like the the like the the sort of the benches. And the betting screens, and they've got televisions up that had Coronation Street on it and stuff. It was all a bit bizarre, uh, and you can't actually hear the fans. There's like no noise comes from, so you can see you're looking at these big perspex screens and see right out onto the the pitch, and it's a brilliant view, but you can't actually hear anything. So it, that that's a bit bizarre. The the guys were talking about you know whether they should pipe in the sound from from outside and stuff like that, but. Very, very bizarre setup, but wonderful, wonderful place sounds, to go and see rugby. Sounds a pleasing place to be. That hopefully the, the rest of the people couldn't hear you, John. Well, do you know that's true? One but there, was, there, there was, there was sadly people in the enclosure that could hear me, Craig. So uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I may have introduced myself and our podcast a few times uh, to to various people, uh, and then tried to barter with a young gentleman to get his conic tie. Uh, which which failed, but uh, Kat Kat did manage to get a Connacht uh, hat, which she uh, she managed to charm off of a, a guy who said, "I don't care, I'm a Leinster fan anyway." Uh, so <laughs> I know, yeah, one of those guys. Um, so yeah, not a great great weekend had, and uh, wonderful. I, I know the guys are are uh, joining us tonight to uh, to to see that and Connacht. Connacht played very well uh, and made Bristol look like idiots. And there was a, obviously a red card in that one for a stamp, I believe, which was was quite quite disgraceful. Well, I, I was just going to say, with all this talk from Craig of uh, putting your foot on people's throats, you got to be careful you don't accidentally kick them in the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, exactly. it yeah, been, yeah. It has been rescinded, though. Uh, it has yeah. been, which is yeah. yeah, well, under the lesser known law of if you see a white man with cornrows, you're allowed to stand on his head. I think. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, to, to be honest, if I look at it, and I'm going to sound all like uh, in my day, um, actually, you, you look at it, 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 I think he saw him go, where am I going to put my foot? And then realised he was going to fall over, so he put his foot down, and unfortunately, yeah. um, it was on Finley Whelan's head. So, uh, well, but, I'm just um, shocked that this, this uh, <clears throat> you know, obviously, this close to the Six Nations with... with Finley taking a, a a knock like that to the head, I, I'm surprised that they haven't changed the tournament laws to award Ireland six points just to to start start them off. 
uh, j- just in just in case. Well, I know, but to be fair, actually, they'll be okay because there's no quarterfinals in the Six Nations. So, oh, be, right, okay. Anyway, how, anyway, back to Grant Gilchrist. Uh, back to uh, Grant uh, Gilchrist. He's, 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 he's uh, poor tackle technique. Yeah, well, he can't go to. I, I saw a few people say, Craig, uh, that he'll obviously go to tackle school. Uh, but given he was there, was it last year he was there? Yes, because I think did he not get a red or a yellow in the France game? Red in the France game, that's Ooh, the one. Red, yeah. yeah. So and I think been... I think if you're from Aloha and you go to school, you get you're never allowed to darken the city walls again. So <laughs> this this isn't quite like resetting your uh, what would it be your intermediate one uh, one foundation maths. So welcome uh, to, well, <laughs> welcome Grant. to the Scottish Rugby Podcast, where you're welcome, unless you're from Wales or from Aloha. Or, or 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 you have corn roads and or right. Leinster or Leinster or yeah there's yeah we're, we're in, I we're can't in. say anything my my wife had a lovely meeting with someone lovely in the education authority in the uh, in um in Aloha Stoke Falkirk so they were very nice over there so, so I can't so, say very much Falkirk yeah okay fair enough right yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Well, as, as Rory says, we haven't heard anything. I'll, I'll come to you, Johnny, actually, because this will segue quite nicely. And, uh, we haven't heard anything about Gilchrist, but two yellows is an automatic, they have a look at it thing. Uh, do you expect him to get a ban? Uh, and even if he doesn't get a ban, uh, or if he does you know, manage to make the squad uh, for the Wales game, will he even be in the 23? I think if he's not banned, he probably will be. And I don't think he is going to get banned for two yellows. We'll wait and see. I guess they might look at them and decide that one of them was worthy of a red, in which case he might be in a spot of bother. But given the way that they've just handed down a ban to to Johnny Williams for his red card when he was playing for the Scarlets, the fact that he's banned is not necessarily going to stop him from playing because Johnny Williams, two of the six games in his ban are two games on the same day. Uh, one is a Scarlets against Exeter friendly, and the other one is a Wales Six Nations game that he's not in the squad for, and they're both counting towards his ban. So, uh, I mean, be, being banned and not playing are not necessarily <laughs> going to figure out to be the same thing. Uh, who's who? Who's going to be in the second row then, Johnny? You've you've obviously you've teased this. You've, you've decided. You've told, oh, you've it's... decided. You told you told us who the second row is going to be. Tell us. Start us off. I mean, ideally, it's it's Scott Cummings and Richie Gray. Um, if if Gilko's banned and Richie's injured, then my guess would be Sam Skinner. But uh, Scott Cummings on on Friday night showed that he is he'll he'll be in there. Certainly in the 23, probably starting against Toulon on Friday. Yeah, we'll, we'll I come, think to, come to it now. Glasgow, Glasgow's oh, performance oh, oh, was was good. It was a real monkey off the back performance. You know, Glasgow have never beaten Toulon, never led at half time, never scored a try in the first half, all of that sort of thing. And it was really sort of like put that behind them stuff. Um, heavily rotated too long, obviously, so I wouldn't necessarily put it down as what's going to turn the table to Glasgow now always beat too long. But I think more importantly than the a performance in that game from Glasgow was some really key people for Scotland that we were waiting to see showed up big time on Friday night, and that will be in the next few weeks massive, I would think. Yeah, so I, I think what what you're alluding to, Johnny, obviously, is there was there was debate, Rory, about the centre partnership. You know, was the Finn Russell Cam Redpath um loving down in Bath going to mean that Redpath came into twelve with Sione possibly slipping out to thirteen? Uh Hugh Jones absolutely like, absolutely immense uh on Friday night. Um who who's who's our starting centres against Wales? I think if Jones if Jones has shown he's, he's in enough form, consider. I mean, Jones is it's not like he's been out; he's just not been playing in the centre. He's been playing on the wing. Um, so I think if he's shown that you stick him straight back into the centre and he can play like that, then I don't see why you would need to split up the partnership with Sione. Um, I think Cam Redpath being in form is is great because it's a you know it's a long tournament. Stuff will happen. Um, it also potentially gives them 
gives them a few options to change depending on what they're what they're facing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think uh, for me, I think stick with with Sione and and Hugh. Um, I mean, I was I was on the the Red Path bandwagon, but <laughs> that's only because I hadn't seen Hugh, you know, doing doing too much in in recent months. So, um, yeah, stick think, stick him in. If it's not Hugh and Sione against Wales, I'm going to tear my seat off and throw it at Gregor Townsend because I, I, that I, I, is I our exactly informed so. partnership. Those those are our those are our two best centres. It's our informed partnership. They have done the job in all sorts of different situations for Scotland. Hugh Jones heard all of the things that everyone said about Cam Redpath, by the way, and he was out on Friday night to show that that oh, was not going to happen. <laughs> he was immense. And there, there is literally not a reason that I can see to not start them. And, no. like, you'd have to be... Something mad would have to happen for that not to be our starting centre partnership. Yeah, okay, well, I, okay. I've got plenty of... Oh, here we go. Uh, here we go. Well, we'll come, 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 come at your reasons, Ma- I say. Matt Curry has entered the chat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt Scott's going well. No, <laughs> no, I'm I'm the Matt Scott guy. You are it's, the Matt Scott fan, yeah. It's it's not, you know. Um, I think he will go down that route. I think he I think he will have um, Tupelo two and, and Hugh Jones. Two things for me. Yes, everyone can talk up Hugh Jones. What a fantastic game he had against Toulon. What a phenomenal game he had against Toulon. Against a second rate Toulon team that was on tour. Okay, first things first. And he's at home. Okay. Second thing for me is we did not fare as well as we thought we were going to fare at the World Cup with the same partnership because teams out there have sussed out what they're doing. What they're doing, and defensively, I, um, uh, Tooney has always tried to mix it up. And if we continue to play the same way as we have been playing, using Silio, Silio, um, Tupelo, and and Hugh Jones. The issue we have is we could probably we could probably see that, uh, that England, France, maybe not so. Much. Yeah, France because um, Sean, uh, Sean Edwards will target them. Um, Wales will definitely target them. They will look at that and they will try and force us to play through our forwards because they'll just target the 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 the, the triangle that they create. Thanks, Squidge, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, in there, so. Yes, I, don't get me wrong. I'm taking. I'm, yes, I have taken a little bit away from Hugh Jones because I've said to him that he's, he's he played incredibly well against a second rate two one side. Um, maybe, maybe played if he played the way he played um, uh, on uh, Friday night. Glasgow might have actually won the uh, European um, oh, uh, Cheap Shield was, final. Cheap shot, man. So, oh, hi, you, on, who's in the Cheap Shield this <laughs> year? <laughs> hey, listen. I haven't. I have. I have not turned around and said that. It's, I've never turned around and said it's the most wonderful thing in the entire world. I'm just saying that you had the opportunity, and he didn't play that well against them, or was he even playing? Was he? Um, so anyway, I think he might have been injured. Actually, I think he was injured. Actually, um, how dare he sit at home and watch the game? <laughs> wow. So anyway, I, what I'm trying to say is, and it's, a, it's a real concern for me is the fact of who. Teams are learning to defend against. That was something new that came along and everyone went, wow, this is amazing. And it still is working for Glasgow because they're playing against teams that some teams are very, very good. They beat a good, they beat a Leinster side, even though it was, again, a, a big, a large, a largely changed Leinster side. But as we all know, Leinster, no matter what team they put out, they can kill everyone. Um, but as far as I'm, so they have put in some fantastic performances, especially at home. My, my concern is when we go up to international rugby, um, we're going up against international coaches who can see what's going on. And, we, and there'll be two things that they'll be concentrating on with Scotland, and that is their mall. Um, and they'll be concentrating on that track, that um, Finn Russell, Sione Tio Pilotto and uh, Hugh Jones. Um, because they've done it with um, they've done it with Duhan. If you look at Duhan, he's coming constantly sidestepping now and trying to come inside because he's not he's they're defending him with two players all the time. I think so, uh also though, if you're talking about the defences figuring out that attack, what you've got to also consider is that Scotland have gone down the genius route of getting rid of our attack coach and so now they won't know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> if um if teams are gonna force us to play th- play through the forwards, do you want me to also mention 
the uh, the other player that Craig will have been really happy to see make a huge impact for Glasgow on Friday night. But the oldest my year. words, is he back or is he back, Craig? <laughs> what what a game he has on Friday as well. <sighs> <laughs> Uh, jealousy is yeah. a bad look on you, Craig. I was I'm the jealousy one on the weekend, mate. That's the, there was, I think it's telling that Hugh Jones was that good that even I didn't go Jack Dempsey should be man of the match. But, oh my days. Uh, and and even actually whisper it, Fagerson at seven worked mm-hmm. as well. And that's two, week, two weeks in a row. That's, oh, come on. Fagerson's far too small to be an actual player. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, it's just something I have to say. That's, that's five minutes of gushing about Glasgow that me and John have done, and we haven't even mentioned a missed two try set up pass off oh, the left hand. Oh, Johnny, Johnny Matthews. Johnny oh. Matthews. We, we all joked about him playing ten, but with that pass, yeah. Oh, the boy could. The boy Scott, could do Scotland it. Oh. starting hooker, the try machine, Johnny Matthews. Hey, mm-hmm. listen, could be, and and I'll tell you one thing. I will quite happily sit here and say I'm I'm sorry and he is a wonderful player and this and this and that and the other if he proves it at an international level, but we'll have to see. Is he not a scouser? Yeah, like you know, yeah, because yeah. they hate it. They hate it. And just call him Welsh just before the game, and he'll <laughs> you'll be yeah. on it. Someone in the dressing room going, "Must be nice to be home, is it?" Yeah, exactly. Just and just go out. Must be nice to be home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it will be interesting. And I think the thing is, I think one of the one of the key issues we've got, the, probably there's a lot of selection things for Scotland. There's there's a few combos that are looking quite good. Obviously, the, the key one selection wise, but we're going to be missing Darcy Graham for the first couple of fixtures as well. Kyle Steen came back in for Glasgow. Again, I know it sounds like we're broken record here, but he had a very, very solid game. Kyle Rowe played very well for Glasgow as well, although definitely as a, you know, you can see, I've never seen somebody look so unhappy scoring tries. Like, you know, I get the whole it's my job thing, but like, Obviously, a couple of decent run-ins, but he's just like, yeah, it's all good. Just because every just... time he scores, he sees his haircut on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, yeah. if we all, apart from Rory, if we hold that, all had the opportunity to have hair like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm actually mine's getting quite back at, Are along. You getting, at that. <laughs> Are you getting a wee part in the back there, Rory? Fantastic. It's a little bit. It's, it's more just that, like the girl, the girl who cuts my hair is just. Always really busy, and I can't be arsed queuing sitting in a queue. So oh man, Junior, not, not get a haircut. Junior Manson is going for the full mullet for his for the last oh, the last part of the season, and it's yeah, just yeah. I'm feeling rather um, sad for him. But for the, for, well, for, the, for if, those watching in black and white, Rory's got mullet. Shave it off. <laughs> <laughs> so who to play? Right, so we've got Kyle Stain, Craig, but. Is, does Stain come in for for Darcy Graham? Is that is that the no brainer here? And then does Scotland go six two and Cam Redpath is on the bench? I, I don't see us going six two. I don't. I'm not. I, I've not never really. Wales. No, and I've never really been a massive fan of six two. To be to be perfectly honest, I've always I've always preferred to have you know a good you know like for example, I'm a big believer in either having. Um, Ali Price or Ben White, whoever's going to get the the nine shirt um, on the bench and have George Horn starting, or the other way around, so that you've got someone to come on to control the game if we're cruising, or someone to come on um, to 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 juice us up a bit and get us back on on track like George would. Um, so there's that. I think Kyle Stein proved himself um, in the Six Nations. I think you know he's an ultimate. Fit for um, uh, for bringing in um, uh, in on the wing as well. However, and this is this is just because he's there, and I'm, I've been incredibly um, uh, incredibly impressed by him. Harry Patterson is something, you know, he is a there's something there. He's he's an incredibly strong player, and inc- just for someone who looks like he's twelve year old, um, and uh, you know, he is he's a like he he battles, he battles stronger than some of the forwards do, 
um, for Edinburgh. He is a. I think he would be a, a, a great person. I, I hope he gets a cap this Six Nations. Um, but I think if you're going to go first game out against Wales at the Principality, you're not putting Harry Patterson in, you're putting Kyle Steen. Yeah, I mean, I suppose if it wasn't at the Principality, we would probably be going, you know, probably a tier two fixture. We could probably get a couple of sets. <laughs> well, to be honest, we're doing that already for a, for a tight head. Pro- I've been polishing my boots. Uh, yeah. it, it seems like we're going around, uh, around everybody to see, uh, have, you, uh, have you ever worn tartan before? Yeah. Um, you know, Iron Brew, you style scrum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are we? Are we correct. calling? No. Are we calling Harry Patterson uh, Highlander? Because he's because there can be only one age group prospect <laughs> that, that <laughs> is in good in any generation, and he's he's the one guy that's he come through from age grades. He is the one. Sorry to any young, gets... young Glasgow players that I've just written off. <laughs> Stop trying to make someone a Highlander just because you feel left out. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Hey, Jamie Doby. I suppose. Yeah, there's one. It's, it's almost shot, like you didn't. You, you, it's almost like you didn't get a pro club up your way or something. Like honestly, I don't, <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know what you're better about. Like, Neither do Glasgow. Well, exactly. Not, well, yeah, I was going to say. I, I just yeah. what I do would say though is if there is anybody watching who doesn't know who Harry Patterson is, please go and watch some of the reels from Edinburgh. Yeah. I've you know I've seen him taking high balls that he he has like Darcy. He has he has no right to take um he's he's incri- you know okay he's had a couple of fairly big concussions um because he just puts himself into places that he that some people would probably make a business decision or a career decision and step out of um and he doesn't and i really do and this isn't just you know i know johnny and i have a laugh about johnny matthews and things like that but you know these are these are prospects that are coming through in harry parson as well and we should have a look at them yeah. One one thing I wanted to pick up just first before we we'll we'll, we'll close this up for the for the free part of the show uh, soon we'll head over to our Patreon. But one thing I just uh, just twigged while you said that, Craig. There was a moment during the Glasgow game, um, Johnny, where uh, Tom Jordan takes the uh, takes a kick through. Um, it's a bobbling ball, and it just pops up very nicely, and he gets it, and he avoids contact, and it's. For me, it was like almost such a massively dangerous collision that that could have happened, and they commented it in the commentary, just saying Tom Jordan's a very brave boy there. Um, I, the more I see of Tom Jordan, the more I'm impressed, but also the more I'm terrified because I think he has zero regard for his well-being. Oh, he's yeah, he's like he's unhinged. The <laughs> the situations that he puts himself in, and uh, and it's. It's almost sort of Finn esque in the way that he like yeah. he'll put himself in an extremely dangerous situation just to, to either poke the ball through at the last minute or get a little pop away, and like some of the spaces he opens up by doing it are it's it's incredible, but it is like real edge of your seat stuff. Very I actually nice. saw I think it was Cam Fisher on Twitter saying. Uh, quite an interesting thing about potentially getting him into the squad. Into the squad, Cause, yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, because because France did it with Miafu last year when he was not quite qualified yet, and yeah. and Tom Jordan becomes Scots qualified in October. I think, I think so it's the author, getting yeah. him in is not the worst yeah. thing in the world. Yeah, yeah, which will be pretty pretty exciting because I think he will. You know, every every time we see him play, keep we keep going. Yeah, but he's not a ten, um, but he's. Keeps playing ten and keeps playing very well. <laughs> and we're like, well, it's, and a, it's point, as well. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, at some point we are mm. going to have to go. I mean, maybe he is actually a decent, decent ten. Uh, Cameron Fisher taking full credit for it. So it says, <laughs> yes, hello, I did see. There's that. a mullet. <laughs> that, that is. Uh, that will you is... stop? Will you stop calling him things like that? That's ridiculous. Hey, your mullet. It looks like a mullet. <laughs> But apparently, uh, apparently Tom Jordan is over in Tenerife, though. So uh, who, that's very Finn-esque as well. Uh, early, early yeah. days, Finn. Um, Never mind. Right. We do have two two big names training with the squad, though. We do, yes. Uh, yeah. If I mean, if you're talking about Scrabble, yeah, like the Highlands own Jamie Dobie <laughs> and, and, and the other guy. The other guy who <laughs> shall not be named. Yeah. So if you haven't seen uh, Jamie Dobie and 
my favourite tight head prop in the world, Javin Sebastian, have been called up into the squad. Uh, I did see Javin spotting uh, in one of the, the pictures, where, which was why Johnny brought it up and said, oh, oh what's happened? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we really do have a crisis at tight head, Craig, don't we? Yeah, I think I think we would have been a little bit more comfortable with Javan, 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 whatever you want to call him. Um, you've got many names from John. Um, yeah. Had uh, had hadn't unfortunately got a, a knee, picked up a knee injury. Um, we then brought in um, the Leicester prop. Um, I've forgotten his name. Hard. Uh, Hard. Will Hard, and uh, he then promptly got injured again. Um, so we now have um, Sir Main of Main, the main main main. Um, I've forgotten that he's got a Mil- Mil- Miller, Miller Mills or Mills Miller, Miller Mills. Yeah. Miller Mills. Yeah, that's the man. Um, you see, I'm rubbish at names. Um, so <laughs> I haven't really seen much of him, so I can't really see where he, he obviously has um, piqued interest with it, and they've been looking, they've been watching him. So you know, to have him in, to, to be able to bring him in. Um, but you, you've got a good, pretty. Pretty much against Wales, I uh, would expect to see Xander Ferguson starting with VP on the on the bench. Um, you know, VP was was again propping very very well um, over the over the last couple yeah. of weekends. So um, we, we kept, but this is where we we worry a little bit and how and, 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 and this is probably where we are struggling the most. I think as Scotland um, is front row, um, and we have to just see where we are. I'm more. Sorry, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, we have talked about the, the propping crisis uh, on, on the podcast a few times, and we have had, we've actually had chats on the Patreon about our propping crisis as well. Uh, it is something that definitely, uh, you know, it's it's how do you encourage players to, to want to be a prop? And whilst best, best love in the world, Craig, you do sell it very well to us. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure that... The, you know, linchpin of the team. Linchpin having, of the team. I'm not sure how many. You can eat as much KFC cups. as you want. Excuse me, my body is a temple. Many, <laughs> many temple pigs have been slaughtered at its mouth. Don't you worry. About <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um, yeah. So what? We, we are going to head over to our Patreon now, guys. Uh, we're going to have a wee chat about that. Um, We'll have, we'll have a starter for 10 about that Netflix series that has come out, which uh, we are going to do a proper special on for you, uh, for the patrons. Um, for the rest of you, we'll, we will be back next week, and we're going to have a, a, a bit of a special episode next week. Uh, you know, it's prior to Six Nations, but we've also got, uh, it'll be Cammy's last, uh, full, last full cap before his retirement. Uh, into semi-professional podcasters or or, or or taking over the CEO of Scottish Rugby Union. Um, whatever, whatever. Yeah, it's, Cam it's, is, Cam is getting benched. He's reached that point in his career. His body's not quite there anymore. You know, he's just, he's, he's taken a few hits over the years and, you know, he's got to let the younger generation come through and take, take over the mantle now. But, yeah, Cammy will be hosting next week for the for the final time. So don't miss that one. It promises to be an absolute cracker. But for now, we are going to toddle on off to our Patreon. So uh, it is good night from me. Good night from Johnny, Rory, and Craig. Bye. Good night. Bye. All. Uh, 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 he took his hands out of his head.